offline gen emerged as a new playstyle last year, focusing around taking range creeps and getting a very early Helmwell Dominator. But unfortunately Dominator has been nerfed quite severely, so what do you actually go for as position 3 gen these days? We're going to take a look at a game of no tail where he plays this position 3 gen and you're going to see how they managed to win the game despite having a pretty bad start. Lessons that cannot be unlearned. Welcome to the Judge of Obelis. My name is Yon. So, right away, you want to take over that range creep. You don't want it to be in tower range, so he's pulling aggro a little bit, but he's still taking one or two tower shots, but that's fine. So, these range creeps have piercing damage, so they do a lot of damage against creeps. So, he's going to use that to try to get a last hit advantage. But with anti mage pulling the creeps under the tower, it's not going to be easy here. They're just sort of normally laning, he's trying to get as many last hits and denies as possible. It's not always easy to actually line up those hits with a creep and uh, your hero, so definitely something you want to practice a little bit and lobby. And right now this lane is not going too well. You can see he's getting two last hits in one deny, anti mage has seven last hits, so not really going well. Also the problem is these creeps are quite easy for anti mage to kill because they have mana. They have no spells but still mana, so anti mage has to be a bit careful here against the stapler but um, of course has to blink to get out of here and you can see Chen started out with the blightstone not with the headdress that you usually see but now he's flying out or walking out a ring of region and a tango to get some extra region which of course you're gonna need so this creep is quite vulnerable here gets killed by the anti-mage and Chen himself also can easily be gone on here with this tusk Task uses the shards and tag team. Anti mage bringing forward, that is a kill on Chen. Anti mage also getting really low here, but he gets the kill first and survives on a sliver of HP. He has uh, no region, so he has to air himself up some more. Actually, brings forward, gets that uh, range creep here, and now you can buy yourself and ship that out to him. Well, of course, you're gonna have to be playing very carefully now with that 60 HP. But uh, there's not really much they can threaten him here as long as he just blink up. So he even tries for that uh, very greedy um, kill there but doesn't get it. So he has to back off now and wait for that courier. And this gives us, uh, Chen some time to catch up here and get some last hits. He's taken over this wild wing which I'm not quite sure exactly why. Like this is not, this is like one of the worst creeps in the game. It doesn't have any particular abilities, it has uh, normal damage, so it's not that good against creeps. Um, but I guess it's uh, always a problem, of course, if you take over these enemy creeps, that of course denies golden experience to yourself. So if those creeps can just die as easily as they can against the anti mage, uh, maybe it's uh, smarter to take over some neutral creep. But of course, you want something better than these wild wings, because these just do nothing. They have so little damage and just have nothing particularly going for them. So usually just you want to take some of these uh, small camp creeps, these are usually better. Um, the, the large camp creeps, the, the, the better ones, uh, really require to be level 5 to get that level 2 holy persuasion. You can get, for example, that Hellbear Smasher. Now you can get the Potato, the regular Hellbear, which has better combat stats than that Wildling. The runes are coming up, Ella Titan going for the runes, but meanwhile, Anti-Mage and Tusk use that opportunity to get a kill on Chen here, so that is another death for Chen, and he's just doing so poorly in this game. He's really far behind with last hits, and he just died twice. So if you look at the net worth, he is very far behind here, compared to the Anti-Mage who's having a very easy game so far. And the other lanes are not going well either. So Nature's Prophet is just not a very good laner against Conker. Here he gets ganked by that support Void Spirit and he is barely making it alive here. That was very close and now even uh, that Void Spirit uh, has to use a stick and uh, his uh, dissimulate to get out of there but out, the, out of there he does get. So these lanes not going particularly well. The only lane that's going well okay so far is the Spectre lane. Spectre against uh, this Beastmaster going about even but um, middle and bottom are definitely losing. The Hellbear and the range creep here make a 
reasonable duo. The range creep is quite good against uh, other creeps with the piercing damage. And this Halba actually surprisingly has uh, hero damage, so he's he does full damage to heroes, which is nice. Uh, but uh, slightly less damage to buildings than a normal um, basic attack uh, type uh, creep would get. So we see Ella Titan TPing back to pick up some items and uh, reaching some mana. Now he's being recalled by Chen, so now they can go in and uh, maybe get something done. But yeah, this is a pretty losing lane and. Losing Lennox anti match always feels really bad. But what does feel good is that uh, this ward version that they have. They see everything here, see all these rotations, Kunga coming in here, but they're just hiding behind here and the other Titan also being careful to not get caught out. So this rotation completely ineffectual and uh, this gives the Nidus Prophet some much needed time to recover from that um, poor start. Chen is once again being snowballed here with Void Spirit coming in. They're trying very much to kill him, but he's quite tanky actually. He has the Ring of Protection, he has the a lot of stick charges, so he survives for a long time here. And eventually falls, but they commit deep for this. Anti-Mage very low now and can possibly be killed here. But um, you know, now the latest Prophet coming in here, so they get the Anti-Mage and the Void Spirit also falling. So it's a 3 for 1 exchange. And of course that is what you're looking for if you're losing a lane like this. So now the Nature's Prophet didn't have the best start, but now he's actually top of the net worth. And that's just one of the strengths of this hero is that you can always just show up to fights. They have this very global kind of lineup. You have Nature's Prophet with the Teleport and the Wrath of Nature, very global hero. And they have Spectre with the Haunt. Just, he hasn't skilled it yet because he just wants to farm with that uh, Meteor Hammer build. And then of course they have Chen with the Hand of God and the Recall from Divine Favor. So this is a lineup that can respond really well to any sort of fight happening around the map. And Chen are finally picking up some good creeps. Center Conqueror, one of the strongest creeps in the early game. You don't really have any setup for this War Storm, so it's not really a strong offensive ability unless you combo it with some disabled from your teammates. But it's, in a, it's a creep that sort of prevents the enemy from running onto you and that's very important here against this uh, tusk lineup here so whenever you run runs you then you can get in land those stomps same same with the thunder claps here good thing about the helmet smash also it's a really good farming creep because it has this swiftness aura extra attack speed as well as this very spammable thunder grab ability that allows you to farm quite fast and of course just the basic range creep not the most exciting but also good for farming um, but now it's being replaced by this much better stormcrafter harpy which has the chain lightning ability chain lightning a very strong nuke in the early game also very notably the harpy has full day and night vision so it's there right now so it's not the most important but at night gives you a big advantage once again shame being gone on here and he has the hand of god available and the magic wand but doesn't get it off so he dies here as well as Spectre also dying top against uh, Beastmaster. So this uh, game is not going too well so far. They're 2k behind. And yes, they have the Spectre, but then they're also up against an Anti-Mage. Also, also just a very strong hard carry and with such a good start, uh, he's going to have a fairly early Battle Fury and it's going to be difficult to actually stop him. Not not trying his best to defend the top tower. Uh, this of course is a dangerous part of the map, it's very easy to get killed here, very easy to, for the enemy to uh, grab around here and uh, approach you from different uh, directions and uh, uh, get some sort of pincer movement going and kill you, so obviously be very careful when um, fighting and farming there. So now a fight breaks out in the mid lane, you see Hand of God helping out here, uh, unfortunately not a no TP, that's pretty bad, he just profit survives here badly, so a really good fight and this is exactly the kinds of fights you're looking for if you're a Spectre. So a chase on the Kunker, Kunker gets another kill here but now he also dies. So on the whole a very favorable fight here for our boys. And of course would have been even more favorable if Chenneth had a TP but as it is he at least gets some farm here. Gets to push in this um, dead lane. He's playing very aggressively here and honestly I don't know what he's doing. He shouldn't be this far forward. Gets gone on here by the tusk. Gets the roared. So they can put everything onto him and get the kill. Konka once again coming in. 
gets off the bolt combo on Elder Titan, trying to burst that hero, and they do indeed succeed. Also rolling on Chen, uh, killing him off, and now Skyrath Mage also vulnerable. So everyone is just dying here, and this is a uh, not a very good game so far. So Chen now going for that Vlad, gives him a bunch of items that just make him a bit more tanky. Has that magic one, of course. Being gone on now by a lot of heroes, they commit very deeply onto him, but they don't quite manage to kill him. With all that heal coming out, he manages to survive on a sliver of HP, and now it's time for the turnaround. They get uh, three kills here, and Beastmaster also in trouble with Spectre coming in here. She doesn't really have a lot of fighting items yet. The Meteor Hammer is not that good in fighting, most of their farming item, but they still manage to kill off this Beastmaster making it a 4 for 0 exchange. The idea behind Position 3 Chen is that you get a good laning stage, you get a lot of last hits with those uh, creeps you can take over, and this allows you to get your levels early. Because the problem with support Chen is that by the time you get to those higher levels of Holy Persuasion, level 3 and level 4, the creeps you can get then have already started to fall off, and there's only a very narrow um, timing window where you can where you're actually really strong as Chen. But with position 3 Chen, this is different. You can just get a lot more levels, you have a lot uh, longer window where you can actually do a lot of things with your creeps. So that's the idea behind position 3 Chen. Um, also, of course, previous patches, you, get, you could get that uh, uh, Dominator, which is just a really strong item you get it early on. But nowadays, Dominator is no longer very strong, so He's instead gone for Vlad's, which is now actually quite good on Chen. Gives you this nice lifestyle aura, which is good for your creeps as well, as well as of course for your teammates. And also gives the plus 18 damage uh, boost, which is uh, great for your creeps and for your team. So pretty even fight here. Uh, a lot of people dying on both sides. Uh, two for three exchange so far. Of course, they were also fighting without Spectre here, she had, didn't, didn't have Haunt up. So if you have a bad start like this, like Notel has here, you're not really playing offlane Chen as like a proper offlaner. He's not really going to have the same kind of impact that a different offlaner, like a Beastmaster for example, would have. But then again, the big advantage of playing Chen as an offlaner is that even if you have a bad start, you can still sort of play him like a reasonably well found support. So there's some offlaners where if they have a bad start, they just don't contribute anything. Like Beastmaster is like kind of an example of that. If he's on the farm, if he's having a bad um, start, he's uh, quite underwhelming. But uh, other heroes like uh, Bristleback or Timbersaw, if they have a bad start, they just don't do anything. With Chen, you can still sort of play him as a support even if you have a bad start. So in this fight here, they found the Spectre, but Spectre bought back and is now on the hunt. They've already gotten two kills and they're maybe trying for more. But um, yeah, they see someone here, they see this Tusk here, so they're gonna go for him as well. With the Scarlet coming in as well, they can probably get that kill, but he's uh, slinks away here on a couple of HP and uses a Snowball on his Prophet and his Prophet, uh, even though. He's generally not the known to be tanky hero. He's quite farmed here, so he's managed to survive this uh, uh, this fight thanks to all the heal coming out of Chen and uh, his wand and so on. So a really one fight here, but because of the buyback, it's uh, not the biggest swing as you would expect, but uh, only a slight swing here. But still, this uh, Spectre doing fairly well with the poor start uh, that her team has had. She's gone for this Meteor Hammer, which is a very strong farming item. And then going for the Drum, which I think is just a really efficient item that we're going to see a lot of in this patch. Just all the stats it gives, you know, mana region, attributes, movement speed. This is something that uh, pretty much any carry wants, so I think it's an item we're going to see a lot of. Um, Chen, on the other hand, is now going for an AC. I'm not sure I agree with this. It seems to me uh, to be a bit premature here. I see, of course, a strong item, but uh, maybe would have liked to have seen at least a medallion or maybe even just a solar crest um, on Chen first. Uh, he gets caught out here and uh, roared, so he's gonna die, but uh, he does get a courier here, the other courier here, 
almost dying, but you know, not quite. It was extremely close here. Meanwhile, Prophet near the side of the map also being caught out. So again, the game not going too well here. They get the constellation kill here on that tusk. So Skylar doing good, a good good job in this game, allowing them to get a couple of kills they wouldn't otherwise have gotten. Even though it's not having the most net worth, he's still contributing a lot here. So normally in Chen you want to go for a mech, and if you're playing support Chen, you're often just rushing an item. But if you're playing offlane, you want to have a different item first because mech just doesn't help you farm, doesn't help you scale. So he's gone for that Vlad's as a replacement for the old Dominator. But then after that you will often go for mech. Here in this game he's avoiding that item. So one of the reasons for that is that he's playing against Anti-Mage. Anti-Mage of course has that mana burn with his um, what is it, mana break here. And this means you're often not going to have mana to cast your mech. Unless you also go for Greaves. And if you go for Greaves you just have... Um, much bigger mana pool and just uh, bigger targeting in the back um, for the anti-mage. So I th actually like the idea here of, of skipping the mech. And instead he's going for the AC which has, as, as I already I don't think it's necessarily the best uh, choice to rush here. But in general AC of course a very strong item. Uh, helps you have the creeps a ton as well as of course giving your team a much needed oomph. Also an item you'd also often go on Nature's Prophet, but uh, if you have uh, another hero that can go that item for you, it's uh, even better, and then that allows Nature's Prophet to uh, specialize more in on these uh, just right-click items. He has that Orchid, which he uh, went for early on, and the Monkey King bar, so he just does a ton of damage, and it's going to be actually ganked here by Conker. So he's gone for this uh, glass cannon build, which is now gonna get him killed, but I mean there's pretty much no item that can allow you to get out of here against uh, that uh, raw. Of course if you had uh, the BKB you could have uh, uh, used that to TP out before the Beastmaster was there. So oftentimes you see Nature's Prophets getting a BKB a second item. Here the NP is being a bit more greedy, going for the MKB as well. Very efficient damage item of course. And this was played um, before the A patch I think, so uh, MKB doesn't have a recipe here yet, but um, even after that, the slight nerf, MKB is still a very efficient item and an item you often want to go for. There's not going to be a ton of evasion here, but uh, Kunka is often going to go for Heaven's Helmet. So in this team fight, uh, as Chen, you want to be a bit careful about the creeps. He's just sending these creeps all in against uh, that Kunka, which uh, is problematic. You see these creeps, they just die, don't really accomplish anything. Uh, but now he's sort of hiding in the trees, very nicely done here, anti-mage being in trouble. So very messy fight here, um, but it's still going to be a, a good fight despite this Aegis. They claim those three kills and uh, Chen now, he thinks about just going back, but um, instead he's going to go and jungle a bit. And that's one of the big advantages you have of, of the flads, just allows you to sustain a lot and uh, gives you a bunch of mana region, a bunch of uh, HP sustain with the lifesteal. You're just gonna farm some, some general camps here and uh, rebuild his army which he lost early in the fight and then he can uh, rejoin his team. So his team are just sort of down here getting a whole bunch of kills. Spectre in a bit of trouble but with a dagger she's able to escape. So in the team fights you have to be quite careful you're playing against heroes like uh, Kunker also anti-mage with the battle fury. A lot of things that can actually kill those creeps quite quickly. And later on it's going to get the level 20 talent with plus 800 holy persuasion minimum health. Which is going to make this a bit easier but um, for now these creeps are quite vulnerable and can get uh, killed quite easily. And um, so you have to be a bit careful. Often you just don't want to send your creeps in. At least not at the start. Sort of keep them back a bit so they can maybe still provide auras but uh, not just die instantly, because you saw in that fight earlier, Creep just went in and just died without doing anything. And that is not what you want. You want those groups to be alive after the fight. So if, 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 if groups are alive after the fight, they can help you push a lot, they can help you take objectives, take Roshan, or you can just sort of send them in uh, later on in the fight when all the AOE stuff is already out. 
But I guess Conker that's a bit more difficult because he's just going to have that tight bringer every four seconds, which just uh, th shreds through those creeps. And the fight being engaged here with the Tusk rolling away and the Whispered also trying to escape and uh, Meteor Hammer not landing here. Uh, Spectre, even though she's been farming all game, hasn't really um, gotten that many items yet. She has Defu the and then now working on the Manta. They decided because the game is so hard that she's not going to go for a uh, Radiance. Um, there's Prophet on the other hand, they're having a really good game, getting kills left, right, and center. And Kunkka coming in here, he's going to be able to TP out. But um, the Tusk, not so lucky. So, with all these auras now coming in, with the AC aura, the, the Vlad's aura, as well as, of course, the auras that uh, the Elder Titan provides, it's going to be a very difficult time here for the Radiant lineup. They just have so little armor. They get all the armor taken away from natural order, and then you have AC taking away even more armor. And now all that's missing is Medallion into uh, Solar Crest later on, maybe. So I think that's definitely an item that's missing here from from No Tail. A very strong chain item, also medallion item that was um, buffed slightly in the last patch with the um, cost being reduced by 50 because of that um, Toby Mask or whatever that's called in Dota 2 being 50 gold cheaper now. So I think that's an item that uh, perhaps you even want to rush for, uh, even as Protection 3 chain because it's so efficient. Uh, Tusk now being on on here and he can uh, go away here for now but uh, they are coming in force here, Spectre coming in, Haunt is almost up so they slow down this Beastmaster, gets hit by the Meme Hammer and uh, is dead but at the same time down here and it is Prophet dying another fight here with Skyroth already dying and Chen doesn't have any of his spells up yet he can use Divine Favor later on to bring people in, but now he's being focused on by the Anti-Mage. Has to retreat, but uh, he's going to survive. And Anti-Mage just doesn't really seem to have the damage to get things done. And with all the uh, Minus armor coming in from El Titan, just reduces his armor by was it 26. So he's 26, uh, 24 base armor. They're losing all that armor, and then uh, uh, the minus armor from, from AC, so he's gonna have one armor and just take so much damage from um, everything from the creeps, from the right clicks from Mage Prophet and Spectre, as well as of course the stapler gun here from Ella Titan. So very nice lineup, uh, nice physical damage combination here. And I really would like to see that medallion, just buy that medallion, please. Smoke coming in here from the Radiant, it's being broken by Spectre here. Reveals Beastmaster, so now there's a back off and try to regroup with anti mage jumping forward a bit far and not really getting anything done. But um, Kunka now being um, almost killed here, so he's gonna die. But Spectre also dead and Void Spirit trying to get out of here. So he's gonna find you, just wanna be nearby, you wanna be safe, and he's even bought a Ghost Scepter now to help himself out. So even though this fight looked a bit bad at the start, now it's turned around and they get four kills with only losing one. And of course, a big part of that is just the Elder Titan um, with his natural order. That, that's just sort of basically winning the game that's, uh, that's so strong. Uh, all these auras with the Elder Titan, with the Chen, and then this huge amounts of fighter damage coming in from the Nature's Prophet, which has been able to go for this very aggressive build. Only defensive item here is BKB. Now he has the Monkey King Bar, the Bloodthorn, and that just uh, shreds through the heroes on the Radiant. Medallion now finally flying out here on that courier, but uh, Roshan is going to be able to be taken without that. So they don't even need it, but of course would have gone even faster with the Medallion. Uh, cheese is also going to be in here. Helps out the Ult Titan be a bit more tanky, but um, probably they're going to give it to Spectre later on. Uh, Spectre now with her Manta style complete, so she's doing okay in this game, but she's not particularly fun. Really, the one who's carrying them in this game is Nature's Prophet. He's just having a really, really strong game. The idea in itemizing Chen is always you want to buy as many aura and utility items as you can, 
and then buy as many safety items as you have to. So in this game, there's so much physical damage that he went for the Ghost Scepter. But um, before that, he just tried to survive through regular itemization. So uh, we see AC giving him a bunch of armor. Flats no longer gives armor. But the Medallion also gives, uh, gives, gives him armor. So he has these two, uh, two armor items. And then also the Ghost Scepter to help protect him. Void Spirit is being gone on. He tries to save himself with a Yules, but it's not enough. So he dies. And now they just want to keep this push going. They still have Aegis on this Nature's Prophet. They find Tusk here together with the Haunt. Uh, Beastmaster gets away here, so they have a bunch of buybacks coming in. So now they will retreat here and regroup. Re uh, regroup and this Anti Mage being stunned off here. Uh, the Center also able to add the stun, but he would have died anyway. So. Now they can just keep pushing here. They have all the auras here, they have all that sustain. So they can just keep going. And uh, with the Nature's Prophet, the level 25 talent, you can just uh, push out this wave really quickly and then come back here. So there's no counterplay here, no sort of split pushing possible. And a Spectre and Nature's Prophet are gonna kill the Beastmaster off here. And as Chen, you just want to. Hit those buildings. We're gonna take over the melee creeps uh, when they spawn because they do more building damage, also tank more hits against buildings. And that is going to be the game. So even though we had a pretty pretty rough start here, still he added a lot of value to his team with all the auras and especially the combination like with the with the AC and the Ella Titan aura is very powerful and that just gave the Ninja's Prophet so much bonus damage that he had a really good game and was able to carry them to a victory. If you want to see more Chen content, I have a huge playlist on this channel. Chen hasn't changed too much since 7.23, so all these older videos uh, are mostly still up to date. So go look through the huge catalog of Chen videos. And if you haven't already, please subscribe and ring the bell and always willing, I'll see you next time.